you are living in. Um, but if I were to think that my conception of what your work is about is transforming the culture of your school. Many people talk about school climate. I think that's a little superficial compared to culture, because culture gets at the beliefs and the rituals and traditions of school, how we are with each other. And I know of no stronger starting place when it's very hard to change the culture that's been in place for a long time. It's, it's extraordinarily difficult. That's why schools change so slowly. That, that the patterns of, of the past are so deeply ingrained that it's really hard to intentionally change culture. Um, one of the most powerful tools I've found for changing the culture of groups that I work with is to come up with an uh, agree to commit about how we're going to work together. To, in, to be very intentional about working differently than the, the, the norm of groups and make a commitment to each other is this is how we're going to be with each other when we do our work. And there's many different ways. To, uh, uh, we used to call this norm setting. Have you, have you ever used the concept of norms and how to our class norms? I, I think of norms as a pretty low bar. You know, it's calm on time. It's it don't interrupt someone. You know, it, it's uh, it, it, they're, they're not very, it, don't dominate your airtime. Commitments are at a much deeper level. We went from norms to agreements. Now, agreements are much more significant and powerful than norms, because norms is just setting a standard, you know, typically by the person in authority. Agreements ask for people to be, to agree that this is how we're going to work. Right? Much higher level than just establishing a norm. Yats has been using the language of commitment, which is a, a higher level than agreement. Right, that you're committing yourself to the, to a set of to a set of agreements. So I'm rather than taking the time, we're only going to be together for a day and a half. It does take time to establish agreements and, and commitments that I think um, we well, it wouldn't be the best use of our time this morning. So I'm going to share with you a set of commitments that is that has really been helpful to me in working with groups. And, what, and, and it's really a distillation of many different groups creating agreements, and these are the ones that I think may be most powerful, right? And we'll talk about each of them, and then we'll see if we, if we are in agreement and can commit to our living these agreements and commitments over the course of our day and a half together. So the first commitment I'm asking us to make is to be fully present when we're together. So I'm going to ask you to unpack for, for the group. What do you think that, what does it mean to you to be fully present? What would it look like? Good. And Daniel, I think of it as sharing the facilitation. It is not the, entirely the facilitators role to keep everyone on task. Or you mean I'm not the commitment cop? You are not the commitment cop. It's everybody's <laughs> responsibility in this room to remind everyone else. And we think of that as lateral accountability. Typically, it's the teacher, the authority figure, the facilitator, the leader of the group, whose role it is is to maintain the control, or the, the commitment to what we said. This is completely non hierarchical It gives every person in the group the authority to remind us that we're behaving in a way that's, that's not helping, that's not moving the group forward. And we're asking for that help. So that, that's why it's so hard. We're asking people to remind us when we're not doing what we said we're going to do. Remember that integrity gap? Here's what we do. If we choose these commitments, this is what we're committing to. And if we're committing to it, we believe it's important. If we stray from them, we're working with less integrity, and I believe every person in this room wants to be, do what they say they believe in. I really believe, believe that deeply, and so the gentle reminder is helpful. It's helpful to the person because they can work with more integrity and be more valued by the group. So I, I have to ask you, is, and this is one way to achieve consensus of, of, in a group. I'm going to ask you if. If, if, in terms of making this commitment, can everyone in this group commit to live by these, these <coughs> agreements? 
Is there anyone, and the, way, and the best way to change in some study, but the quickest and easiest, is to ask the polar opposite. Is there anyone who cannot commit to live by this set, simple set of agreements? Speak your truth. Do not filter. Can I just see a thumbs up to make sure we have affirmation that we're committed, that we're, we can live, we'll live with these commitments and live them? Good. So part, another two other pieces that are important for consensus, not necessarily in this setting, but it will be back at school. It's not just that, but there's a difference between living with something and living something. Typically when you're trying a new idea, you ask, can you live with it? Right? It's not a, it's not a commitment of, I'll do it, but can I live with it? And because you can't, you know, we have to commit. Our work is so critical and our time is so short. But living with it is a lower level, but important, that I can, I can go along with this decision. The other two elements of consensus is that I will enthusiastically support any member of the team who's following, implementing the decision. And I will do absolutely nothing to obstruct the implementation, to sabotage the implementation of this decision. I will not leave the room and say, we never should have done that, or it never worked. Okay, are we good to go? Great. So um, we're going to get up and move now. Thank you for it. Yes, please. I wonder if we should just very quickly say, how might you use this? Oh, the oh, importance yes, be brief, of course. So the importance of, of setting ground rules. If we want the dialogue we're leading to go to deeper places and new places for people, how do we set the norms? Like this summer, Ian was, he opened the door with respect, 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 and then you all explored it with your, your full value commitments. Um, there's this that Daniel just led you through, but it's for, an hour, it's for a day and a half meeting, and it took about 20, 25 minutes to fully explore it. So you have a dialogue night for two hours. What slice of this do you take? How do you choose to make a statement that you are going to keep this safe for people and people are going to commit to keeping it safe. Um, so I think that's sure, please. So that's the, the question and I, any, you know that there, it could be from from putting these commitments up and reading through them without discussion and asking for thumbs but not doing it in depth. Uh, just other ideas if you want to just talk through the two hour, the one hour faculty meeting, the two hour dialogue night. Yes. What's the minimum that you want to have if you're going to ask people to be in full dialogue? Right. And, and, it's, and it's not a group that's meeting with regularly. Exactly. Right? Yeah. New people yeah. may be very disparate. If we just have respect, and unpack, like you did last summer, was it? Mm -hmm. and, un and spend three minutes unpacking what is it like to be respectful in a group, I think you know, you'll, you'll change the tone. Okay. And you'll ask people to commit to that, to be respectful to every member of the group in that time. I mean, it would be one simple way of, of establishing the conditions under which we'll work. Mm -hmm. 